people near the coast should evacuate immediately to higher ground if they are. That warning was extremely good advice. Prefecture in northeastern Japan, an intensity of seven was recorded on the uh, R studios. When earthquakes hit newsrooms, it's easy to see straight away how powerful they are. And if they're out to sea, just off the coast, then the tsunami doesn't take long to turn up. And this is a look, once again, at Kamaishi City in Iwate Prefecture. And it looks like a tsunami has been engulfing, engulfing the port. You're seeing live footage of a tsunami engulfing the port area of Kamaishi City in Iwate Prefecture. We've been reporting earlier on that the, the meteorological agency has issued a warning for tsunami up to six meters deep, uh, six meters high, and this is what's happening right as we speak. A large tsunami engulfing the port of Kamaishi in Iwate Prefecture. While that was all happening in the northeast of Japan, Tokyo, the capital further south, was feeling it as well in different ways. TV channels showed fires burning, people trapped in high-rise buildings. Although other pictures suggested most buildings had stood up to the earthquake, as they're designed to, others had collapsed, and it's impossible to imagine the number of dead from this won't be substantial. Also establish a special office to look into the damage to banks and other financial institutions. Geological experts have warned that while the tsunami roared west towards Japan, it's also likely to have moved north and that means the southeastern tip of Russia near Vladivostok. There are warnings for other countries as well, as diverse as Taiwan and Hawaii. Lawrence Lee, Al Jazeera. Yeah, well, a, a tsunami is, is formed by the seafloor moving vertically due to a large earthquake. You need a, a very energetic earthquake to, to really make a significant change in the sea level, and we've certainly seen that today with magnitude 8.8 is, is a very intense earthquake. Um, and that has, um, has pushed the sea level up uh, above, above the rupture in the sea floor and, and that wave then propagates outward from, from that rupture across the ocean in, in all directions. When you're seeing the pictures that we're seeing on the screen now, the force of the water, can you just give us an indication of just how strong a, that force of water coming in on land is? Nothing can, can stand up to it. No, that, that's exactly right. We've had... Uh, uh, observations already measured uh, on the Japanese east coast of, uh, of waves of 7.3 metres above normal normal sea level. Um, there may well be higher spots where the, there aren't gauges, but that's, that is an enormous wave. And, and what people have to bear in mind is that a tsunami wave is quite different from a normal wind wave, which goes up and down in a matter of seconds. The tsunami wave uh, has a wavelength that can be hundreds of metres so it's an enormous volume of water. It rises seven metres and may stay up as water pours in at that height for 10 to 15 minutes before it goes down again. So it's an enormous volume of water and that's why the force is so great. We've seen a number of devastating earthquakes over the past few weeks. Only a couple of weeks ago, the terrible earthquake in Christchurch, now this in Tokyo. Why are we seeing so much seismic activity now? Uh, I don't know that anybody could answer that. Um, unfortunately, we don't know how to forecast uh, when earthquakes are going to happen. Um, this is all around the ring of fire, which has existed around the Pacific for a very long time. Um, its activity fluctuates with time, um, and um, I'm, I'm not a seismologist, but um, I, I don't think um, anybody is really capable of um, predicting when these peaks in activity are going to happen. Um, we just have to react as quickly as we can when, when it does happen. Well, Chris, you are from the Australian Tsunami Warning Centre. I'm just wondering just how much warning it is possible to give. What sort of timings do you have to tell people, you know what, a tsunami is on its way? Is it seconds? Is it minutes? What? Yeah. No, it's certainly not seconds. Um, it, it's, it's a sad fact that it, it does take some minutes for the uh, earthquake signal to travel through the Earth's crust to, to reach the seismographs and and for that information about the magnitude of an earthquake to be, to be assessed. Um, and that's usually around um, five to ten minutes is, is what's needed to do that accurately. Um, and then, of course, uh, warning has to be formulated and distributed. So it's, virtu it's very, very difficult to give um, useful warnings to anybody who's uh, less than 30 minutes 
tsunami travel time away from the earthquake. in northeastern Japan is being hit by a tsunami that's following an earthquake thought to have measured 8.9 on the Richter scale. Well, you're looking at live pictures of the situation right now in the area. Water is currently surging inland in Sedai, some 350 kilometers north of Tokyo. People are being evacuated to a higher ground. You can see some people coming up to the roofs there, and the waves are expected to reach up to 10 meters. There are considerable casualty numbers being reported and widespread damage in the country's northeast. While well, TV pictures show buildings, cars, and even ships being swept away, communication links are paralyzed, making it difficult to confirm levels of damage or injuries. Well, Tokyo's Narita International Airport has also closed. And the quake's epicenter was located 130 kilometers off of Japan's Pacific coast. Well, three residential areas on Russia's Kuril Islands, north of Japan, are also under threat with emergency services on standby. Well, we will keep you updated on what's, what's happening over there right here on RT. I want to bring in Dr. Lucy Jones. She's with the U.S. Geological Survey. Doctor, thanks for being with us. Uh, just sure. first off, can you give us some perspective, your take, worst earthquake to hit Japan? Uh, in quite a while, is without question. Um, this is the same size as the earthquake that hit Chile last February, pretty, pretty much. And uh, is, you know, as you can see where the tsunami is, that's what happens when you have this big an earthquake. To, to be this big an earthquake means that you have to have a very long fault, probably uh, three to 500 miles long under the ocean. And so all of that ocean floor got moved up during the earthquake and displaced all the water. And that's why we're seeing what we're seeing. Um, are you agreeing that we had spoken to a geophysicist earlier that this is probably the worst that we're going to see of it when it comes to a tsunami, um, that, that any possible uh, further aftershocks would not trigger something as massive? Okay, now the aftershocks, you know, uh, yes, so very much the magnitude of the earthquake determines how big the tsunami is. That doesn't mean the tsunami is over, though, because it, it will produce multiple waves. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we've already had the um, uh, high tide, if this came in at high tide and the tide's going down now, the further waves will be smaller. But if this was at low tide, as, as the tide comes in, the next waves could be uh, still be pretty bad. Uh, in Chile, I know that the largest waves in some areas were three to eight hours after the main shock wow. because of the tides. Wow. Um, give us an idea, your expertise on where this struck and how significant this was, what, what it would have been like had this struck on land, and, and did, was there any kind of bullet dodged by the fact that it was underground, or did that make it worse? Uh, well, it's I'm sorry, being underwater. underwater the, being underwater meant it was able to create the tsunami. And uh, essentially, these t you need such a huge fall to produce such a big earthquake, it wouldn't have been on land. So it's sort of a, a hypothetical. The good news is, is that, you know, uh, quite a, much of the land will be farther away from the earthquake because of this. And then the bad news is by being underwater, you create the tsunami. And it will depend on what the relative uh, damages are. I mean, we see these pictures of fires. And that's been historically a huge problem in Japan. The Great Kanto Earthquake of 1923 uh, burnt Tokyo essentially to the ground, killed 150,000 people. Um. So being able to get the fires under control is going to be the critical issue for Japan in the next few hours. Is that going to be something that we could continue to see more fires breaking out? How would that be triggered? Well, they'll continue to be because you'll continue to have aftershocks and also, you know, you've, you've got the gas that's already turned down or uh, the electricity goes off, it comes back on and your lamp that's now sitting in your sofa can cause uh, more fires and then you've already got gas having escaped and it'll, it'll jump out. Um, and like California, Japan's got the problem of a lot of wood frame construction, more flexible in the earthquakes, but then more vulnerable to the fires. 
Uh, Dr. Jones, I want you to stand by real quick. I uh, want to update that there has been no tsunami warning, watch, or advisory that's been issued for the west coast of the United States. Um, following this 8.9 magnitude earthquake in Japan. There is, though, a tsunami watch that has been issued for the state of Hawaii. Um, I believe we have Chris Warren, one of our meteorologists from the Weather Channel, available. Is that right, Chris? Are you with us? All right, not yet. So, Dr. Jones, I want to stay with you for a moment. Um, as you're hearing that, we know that the state of Hawaii has been given an, a tsunami watch. Um, what do you make of the d other areas that could be affected as a result of this? Okay, yeah, the watch just means it's a long enough time before the first wave will get there that it's not yet at the status for the warning. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, I, I'm not sure why there isn't a, a, wa a watch out for the West Coast. I could imagine that uh, we would need to. Um, when I look at the Alaska website, it's still calling us a 7.9. So I, I'm the last of the group that would be making the watches or warnings for the West Coast. Right. The officials but, say, according to this AP wire, officials say they are still assessing the situation. So as with any breaking news story, that could change. But this is the latest information that we have right now. Right. Um, I, I would not be uh, saying, oh, good, don't worry about right. it. I, I uh, see what's going to be happening. Historically, um, Earthquakes in Japan can cause a lot of damage on uh, the east side of the Pacific, on our side of the Pacific. Um, in general, the most damaging direction is the one that's perpendicular to the lay of the fault. This fault is mostly north-south, a little bit northeast-southwest. So you'd look towards the mostly to the east, but a little bit to the south of east for the maximum damage that puts Hawaii in a bad position, uh, maybe Mexico and uh, northern South America might be in worse shape than California from this, even though they're farther away. There might be more um, a higher wave going in that direction. But that's really a guess without enough information. And obviously we will continue to update people um, as we get information as to whether or not that changes because officials say they're still assessing it. I want you to react for a moment to one of our producers there in Tokyo, Arata Yamoto, who, who said that they're actually, they've been allowed back into their office building in Tokyo. Um, considering that you spoke about possible aftershocks, um, is there any advice you have to folks that are out there that, that may be in their office building watching this? Well, I mean, the statement that they're let in suggests that the shaking wasn't as, as extreme in Tokyo. Uh, we can see that the epicenter is quite a bit farther north. As I said, now the fault's going to be pretty long, but it looks like maybe it stayed all north of Tokyo, so the shaking there wouldn't be as extreme. They should be expecting to feel aftershocks. There was a magnitude 6.4, only about 40 miles from Tokyo, according to the USGS uh, uh, National Earthquake Information Center. And Dr. So. Jones, I want to just update just in the few minutes of when you were describing that, we have a new AP News alert that says the Tsunami Center widens its warning following Japan earthquake to include Hawaii and the rest of the Pacific. So as you said, um, this this is something to be concerned about. Yes, and, and I think that the main thing to, to say to American viewers is you know the it's going to take uh, the tsunami waves travel at about the speed of a jet airplane, so uh, it takes us nine hours to fly from LA to Tokyo. It's something that's going to be the order uh, of time for the waves to get over here. So it'd be coming in uh, tomorrow morning, and um, you know we all too often see people uh, respond to a tsunami warning by going down to the beach to see oh, it, and I just right. hope that people are not that stupid. You know, we saw, um, yeah, and we saw the, the exact same thing. We got video from beaches uh, in Hawaii where we were watching people. This was after the Chile quake where we didn't actually see a tsunami, but we saw folks down there when there was a specific warning for folks to move to higher ground, um, and we saw people out there just trying to get a look at what may have happened, and uh, obviously, as you are warning, that is not the smart thing to do. I uh, got to go to Chile last summer and speak with some people who had been in the area affected by that tsunami. And their lives, they were there because the minute the shaking stopped, they started running for high yeah. ground. And people who live in these areas learn that. Uh, you don't, the tsunami can be incredibly deadly. And I, I think more of the world recognizes this after the the Sumatran tsunami in 2004, 
Um, but this is just one more example of, of ex just how devastating a tsunami can be.